Why does he keep hurting me? Hurt and pain are integral in the narcissistic dynamic. Whether your narcissist is male or female, an intimate partner, a family member, friend or colleague, there will at some juncture be the appearance of hurt. It is the primary source, usually an intimate partner, who carries the largest burden of this hurt, since it is they who spends the most time with our kind, is entwined in our manipulations and suffers the worst of the devaluation and discard. Whilst the incidence of hurtful behaviour cannot be denied in the devaluation, there may be some comprehension that occurs because the formal relationship between narcissist and victim is continuing. Judged by the victim and a normal person's standards, that hurt should not occur at all. But once one understands the nature of our behaviour, it is understandable, albeit not accepted, that it occurs during devaluation. The hurt that is occasioned by the discard is like any that occurs when somebody has found that their romantic and intimate relationship has been terminated. It is safe to say, however, that when the cessation occurs as a consequence of our discarding, the hurt is amplified by the cruel nature of the discard, the confusion that surrounds it, and the contrast with the golden period that once shone so brilliantly. From pedestal to the thorny ground. This often takes place in a matter of weeks. The hurt is understandable and recognisable when it occurs in the context of the devaluation period and the consequential discard. Yet, what of the aftermath and the hereafter? The hurt invariably continues following the discard. I do not refer to those dark, lonely days as you attempt to piece together what happened, that howling wilderness where nothing makes sense and you are left to pick up the pieces yourself and tackle the daily agony of what has happened to you. The gnawing hurt of wanting us back, the bewildering mystery of why somebody who supposedly loved you could do such a thing to you, the stark realisation that we have moved on to someone else without so much as a backwards glance towards you, the misery of unanswered questions, the wretchedness of the emptiness that ha hangs around your day like a spectre, and the shame as the drip, drip, drip of realisation causes you to ascertain that you have been conned. Harsh as those things are, they are the residue of your entanglement. The collateral effects of us taking from you. These are all difficult enough to comprehend and deal with, especially in an eroded and worn down state. But why do we return and pile hatred onto the pain, misery, onto the woe and malice and additional and further hurt? Why do we engage in the malign follow-up hoover? The malign follow-up hoover occurs when we revisit you in many different ways, sometimes in person, sometimes through technology, sometimes through others, with the intent of hurting you further. Why do we do this? Have we not made you suffer enough? Have we not had our fill of your begging, pleading, loving attempts to make us happy? Why can we not just leave you be? You do not even have the less hurtful experience of benign follow-up hoovers, where we seek positive fuel and to charm you to come back into the former relationship. This is pure, unadulterated malice directed at you time and time again. Let us start by ascertaining which of our kind utilises this malign hoover. The answer is all of our kind. The lesser, the mid-range and the greater all engage in the application of the malign follower hoover. It may not happen with every victim, but is a part of each school of narcissists' arsenal. When is it used? It occurs when the formal relationship has ended, thus when you have been discarded or if you have managed to escape. How does it occur? As ever, since it is a hoover, it relies on the hoover trigger and the hoover execution criteria being fulfilled. 
but there are additional considerations and motivations which you ought to be aware of. With the greater narcissist, if you have been discarded, you can expect a malign follow-up hoover reasonably soon post-discard because the energy levels and intrinsic malevolence of the greater will facilitate this type of hoover more than the mid-range or the lesser. The greater has an enhanced desire to punish you for failing us, hence why you are devalued and discarded. But those treatments are not deemed enough. You failed. We see this as a criticism of us, and therefore it is justifiable to punish you. The malign follow-up hoover is also deployed because the fuel that we gain from your negative emotional responses to being hurt assists us, empowering our ongoing seduction of your replacement. Thus, not only are you being punished for your perceived failures, you are being used to ensure that your replacement is completely and utterly embedded and seduced. The malign follow-up hoover allows us to triangulate you with the new replacement, and it allows us to demonstrate to the facade that you are trouble, and this is why we have to be harsh with you. We have been left with no choice but to do this, so the facade is made to believe. These malign follow-up hoovers are usually as a consequence of you trying to contact us post-discard. We find you to be a complete irritation at this point. We want to focus on the embedding of the newly seduced new primary source. We want to enjoy their positive fuel in peace. We do not want you necessarily causing trouble. And therefore, the malign full of Hoover is used to not only draw fuel from you and to punish you, but to try and keep you away as we focus on our new shiny plaything. The greater may switch to a benign follow-up hoover at a later stage, usually when your replacement is being devalued, and some positive hoover fuel is required or even to tee you up to return you to the position of primary source. It is the case, however, that following your discard, you will face malign follow-up hoovers as long as the trigger and criteria occur. Thus, if you stay away from us, you are far less likely to be subjected to these malign follow-up hoovers. Where you have escaped, you will face the initial grand hoover first, which is designed to suck you back into the former relationship. This is benign in nature. If this fails, you will then have a period of respite, many weeks, perhaps even months, as we focus on the acquisition of a new primary source, and embedding and seducing them and remaining away from you as a consequence of your resistance denoting that we are wasting our energy and you are an unattractive fuel prospect. Once our fuel levels have increased again and have done so for a while then subject to the trigger and criteria the malign follow-up hoovers are likely to occur. As above this is to punish you but the malice will be greater because you escaped us. This is the ultimate act of treachery. The new primary source will be in place, therefore there is no need to go for the fuel that is generated to seduce this person, although it may be partially used to power the ongoing golden period. More likely, the fuel gathered from these malign hoovers is so potent and effective that we use the power generated to keep hammering you with more and more hoovers. This creates a dangerous situation because there will be a combining of a malicious obsession and a fuel obsession, so you become stuck in the sixth sphere of influence. Thus, there are repeated hoover triggers. The fuel has been obtained and thus the criteria is more readily going to be met. Thus, if you find that your narcissist just will not leave you alone and is embarking on a campaign of malign behaviour towards you, it is highly likely that this is because there are repeated hoover triggers because of a malicious obsession and or a fuel obsession with you and that the hoover criteria is easily met because it is easy to contact you and you are providing fuel so readily that you perpetuate the behavior the more fuel you provide us allows us to continue to power the malign hoovers of you if you have escaped your narcissist 
and you find that you are being subjected to repeated and sustained malign hoovers of this nature, you have been unfortunate enough to become lodged in the sixth sphere, owing to one or probably both of these obsessions. The mid-range and the lesser narcissists have far less interest in punishing you. They do occur, and if so, they will be shortly after your discard and short and sharp in nature. Again, this is more likely if you try to contact us while we are trying to enjoy the golden period with our new primary source. The malign follow-up hoovers will occur in order to swatch you away, tell you to stay away, and to be nasty to you. The mid-range and lesser narcissists do not have the energy levels to embark on a sustained campaign of malign hoovers purely for punishment. They need to use the fuel gained to assist in the powering of the golden period. It can happen, but their concern is to focus on the new primary source, and therefore their malign hoovers are designed to force you to go away and stay away so they can continue their enjoyment of the golden period in peace. Accordingly, if you have been discarded, the mid-range or lesser narcissist will be focused on your replacement. And if they do deploy malign, deploy malign follow-up hoovers, this will be done for the purposes of trying to cause you to stay away so that you do not interfere with the golden period that they are enjoying with their new primary source. If you have escaped, you will experience an initial Grand Hoover from the lesser and the mid-range also. But if that fails to pull you back into the relationship, they will need to focus their efforts on securing a new primary source and gaining that fuel promptly. They will not have the energy or desire to maintain a malicious campaign against you as well. You are more likely to be left alone as they deal with their fuel shortage and then any follow-up hoovers which occur down the line are far more likely to be benign in nature since the seduction and embedding has already taken place. Accordingly, malign follow-up hoovers are predominantly, albeit not exclusively, the preserve of the greater narcissist. The situation where you are likely to experience them from all types of narcissists is where we have discarded you, replaced you with somebody else, but you keep in effect pestering us. We want you to go away. We want you to leave us alone and not spoil the new golden period. We may even be concerned that you could be a threat to telling our new primary source what we really are. And therefore, the lesser, the mid-range and the greater will all look to apply malign follow-up hoovers against you if you try and interfere in our new relationship. This is not complete, however, without some consideration of you, the recipient of these malign follow-up hoovers. Dependent on what category of empathic individual you are, this will also impact on the nature and the purpose of the hoovers. With regard to an empath, this is done to draw negative fuel and potentially to draw you back to the former relationship so the pain stops. But benign follow-up hoovers are more likely to be used to achieve this. As regards to super empath, this is done to draw fuel only. The super empath will not be drawn back into the relationship through malign follow-up hoovers, but they will seek to resist their impact. They may well provide fuel from the, their responses of frustration, hurt and anger, but we are aware that there is next to no prospect of returning the super empath to the former relationship. That can only be done through either the initial grand hoover or benign follow-up hoovers. Versus a codependent. Again, using a malign follow up hoover will draw fuel, but the codependent is, of all the empathic types, the one who is most likely to be actually be pulled in because of a malign follow up hoover, as they see it's the only way to halt the agony that is being caused. Thus, if the narcissist continues to mistreat an individual, a codependent individual will, out of all of the empathic people, be less likely to resist these malign follow-up hoovers and agree to the resurrection of the relationship in order to stop the ongoing agony. So what do malign follow-up hoovers appear like? There are hundreds of different ways that they manifest. Here is a selection. Posting your mobile number on a sex website so you receive repeated calls harassing you. Shouting insults at you when we see you. 
putting a brick through your window, slashing the tyres on your car, following you and glaring at you, sending funeral wreaths to your home, sending vicious text messages and emails, having lieutenants contact you to insult you, daubing insults in paint on your car or house, smearing dog mess on your windows, threatening to contact social services or indeed contacting them so you are investigated, hacking into your computers, leaving notes and messages containing threats and warnings, posting comments about you which are unpleasant on social media, uploading intimate footage of you onto porn sites, posting intimate pictures of you on the internet and or to your family and friends, incurring financial liabilities on your behalf, setting fire to possessions you have left with us and dumping the charred remains on your drive or sending you footage of us burning them, threatening to steal or harm your pets, repeatedly driving by your home or workplace, reporting you to the police and or other authorities that you are investigated or arrested, seeking a restraining order against you on trumped-up grounds. How do you deal with them live for Lord Hoover? Understand whether you are at risk of happening by considering the points above. You must stay out of the spheres of influence. Make yourself an unattractive fuel prospect to us in the hope that the Hoover execution criteria are not met, chief amongst which is reducing all potential contact as far as you can and thereafter bracing yourself. If they keep happening, avoid giving fuel as best as you can and seek assistance from others to either build a buffer between you and us, thus making the Hoover execution criteria harder to fill so a Hoover is less likely to take place, or escalate the matter to the relevant authorities on the basis of harassment and or specific criminal behaviour. Understand how it happens, why it happens, and then you can prepare yourself.